this morning. That's awesome. My name is Cassandra White, and I am honored to be your director of worship here at Resurrection Metropolitan Community Church, where God is good. And all the time. Amen. We're so delighted to, that you chose this place today as your place of worship. So thank you so much. And to those of you who are online joining us, we're going to stand on our feet. We're going to turn around to those cameras and we're going to give you a big old wave. Can you wave back at us? Hey, y'all. We're so glad you're here. Hey, family. We're so glad you're here with us today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but yet you chose to be with us today. Amen and amen. So, this is one of the new popular um, uh, praise and worshipy kind of songs that I'm hoping that many of you know, right? Um, so, you have little old me on the piano today, so sing out loud and proud. This is Amazing Grace. Amen? Amen. <laughs> breaks the power of sin and darkness who love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings
Resurrection MCC Church, where God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good. We are so, so glad to see you. It, you look beautiful, and it is a joy to be in this place worshiping with you today. If you are with us for the very first time, we are glad that you are here. We'd like to know that you're here, and so we are going to ask that you uh, register your attendance by going to RMCC and texting that to 97000. We also have a gift for you. It's a Resurrection MCC mug, yes, and you can get that when you leave this place right at our uh, inspiration and uh, hospitality table. Someone will be there available to get that to you. And then if you'd like, you can go into our gathering place or even our bookstore, and there are some drinks that will be available for you to fill your cup. We got to fill that cup. Amen. Amen. Well, we have a lot going on uh, in, our, in our congregation right now. I'd also like to invite all of, our, all of our folks that come on all the time to register your attendance as well in the Church Center app, so please do that for us. And like I said, we have a lot going on. We've got our um, anniversary coming up, our 52nd anniversary. Yes, yes, yes. To start off for our anniversary, we, are, we have a goal uh, that's part of Easter as well as anniversary of $25,000, and we know we can meet that goal. We need your help, so we want to make sure that you know how to contribute towards that $25,000 goal. So uh, you could go to the website, and there's a link there uh, on the text to give, or you can go to, uh, where's the other place you can go? Uh, in, the, in, in the, somebody help me out. Where's the other place you can go for that? There's a text to give, and oh, okay, I know, on the regular give on the website, when you do your general offering, uh, there's a place where there's a, there's a drop down, and, and then you can uh, select the, 20, the 52nd anniversary giving campaign, and then you can contribute there. So there's multiple ways to contribute to that goal, and we'd love to see you uh, participate in that way. But also, we've got a dance coming up to help us to celebrate. We're going to shake a leg or two, and that's going to be on April 20th. And so you'll want to get tickets to that dance. And the way you get tickets to the dance, there's a communication that goes out on our weekly mobilizer that shares with you how to register for the dance, as well as on the Church Center app. You can also register for the dance that way. So part of your registration, when, once you've registered, it then will give you information to purchase your tickets. Tickets are $50 single ticket and $80 a couple. So there's multiple ways to participate in uh, supporting the anniversary. And then on April 21st, we celebrate our 52nd anniversary, and we are excited about that. We have Reverend Dr. Cindy Love, who's going to be here to preach on that Sunday. So we're, yes, yes, Reverend Dr. Cindy Love. And so we're excited that she's going to be here. All right, so lots of other things going on. You can pick up that information in the weekly mobilizer. And also, just a reminder, since this is our first uh, Sunday, we like to always remind you where our restroom facilities are, which are in the, this area in the back that I'm pointing towards, as well as over here. And we also have a children's church that's going on at the Reverend Vicki Gibbs uh, ch ch Children's Church. So if you have children with you today and you'd like them to hear the word of God and to feel God's love, then we certainly uh, welcome the children in uh, with uh, Debbie Mansfield, uh, just right to the back and then to the left, my left, that is. Immediately following service, we have our congregational meeting. It's a very important conversation that we want to have. And so as soon as the service ends, right after the benediction, we're going to ask you to remain in your seats so that we can then begin that conversation. You'll also need to register your attendance, and there will be some tables. You'll see uh, Ria's over there. Uh, you'll register your uh, attendance for that meeting. And those of you who are online, when prompted, you'll also register your attendance on the Zoom session. So we'll need to make sure that um, everybody is prepared to uh, participate in, again, in this very important uh, conversation. At this time, I invite you to silence your cell phones so that they are uh, not participants in the service. <laughs> uh, but we welcome you here with your cell phones. My name is Reverend Denise Junius, and I serve as your associate pastor 
alongside with Reverend Mona Lopez, who's out preaching at another uh, church today, so we uh, send prayers out for her. Today, we have one of our own. His name is Reverend Willie White. Yes, yes, yes. Reverend Willie has founded two MCC churches. Uh, the first one was in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. Uh, that church is still vibrant, it's still beautiful. They, they still have their worship services. And so that, that speaks a lot to his vision and his leadership that that church is still going on, as well as the church he started, he founded in Rochester, New York. But he's been part of our church community since 2008. And uh, that also is a testament to the type of uh, spiritual leaders that we have in this place and the talent that we have all around, uh, not just with our preachers, but with our audio team, our music team, our choirs. Uh, we have so much talent in this church. And so we want to recognize that talent today, specifically as Reverend uh, Willie White uh, preaches for us. At this time, we'll go ahead and be uh, begin our worship service. Amen. Please remain seated for a reading from the book of Psalm 134. Come and bless Yahweh, all you who serve Yahweh. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless Yahweh. May you be blessed from Zion by the one who made heaven and earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated for the reading from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, 
The doors were locked in the room where the disciples were for fear of the temple authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Having said this, the Savior showed them the marks of crucifixion. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw Jesus, who said to them again, peace be with you. As Abba God sent me, so I'm sending you. After saying this, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you retain anyone's sins, they are retained. It happened that one of the 12, Thomas, nicknamed Did Didymus, or twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, we have seen Jesus. Thomas's answer was, I'll never believe it. Without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand into the spear wound. On the eighth day, the disciples were once more in the room. And this time, Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them saying, peace be with you. Then to Thomas, Jesus said, take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand into my side. Don't persist in your unbelief, but belief. Thomas said in response, my Savior and my God. Jesus said then, you've become a believer because you saw me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs that are not recorded here in the presence of the disciples. But these have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the only begotten, so that by believing, you may have life in Jesus' name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And that, my friends, is what it's all about. Dear God, may the words from my mouth be the word for your people. Amen. This is the Sunday after Easter. We are in a story that started two Sundays ago. There was this one float parade And that float was a donkey. And there was a rider on this donkey, and they called him Jesus. And in this one float parade in the city of Jerusalem two weeks ago, the people ran out into the streets. They were running up and down the streets, and they were cheering. They were pulling branches from palm trees, and they were tearing off their clothes. And they were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then on Thursday of that same week, there was a dinner. It's the most famous dinner in the history of the world. One may wonder what they ate at this famous dinner. It was a Passover dinner. The scripture calls it a supper. What did they eat? Who knows? But whatever they ate, one thing we know for sure, the host of that dinner, of that supper, calls special attention to bread and to wine. The scripture tells us that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and wine. Also on this most famous dinner or supper in the world, was the most infamous betrayal in the history of the world. If I look at you and I call you a Judas, I don't need to say anything else. And then we come to Friday. The palm wavers are no longer there. The people have gathered up their clothes, and I guess they put them back on, and they've gone home. The Hosannas have faded. They seem to have forgotten. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All the cheering has given way to the cruelty of crucifixion. What a change from Sunday to Friday. Once we're celebrating on Sunday, and then by Friday, the same Jesus is hanging on the cross between two thieves. And there, in all of that agony, in all of that pain and that suffering, We hear Jesus crying out to God, and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Does that sound familiar to you sometimes? How many times in your life, how many times in your journey of things seem so dark and so difficult that you say, my God, my God, 
Why? Why have you forsaken me? These are words from Jesus, the one who earlier had been so praised. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he dies. He dies. And he's buried. And for all of his disciples and those who had followed him for all these days and years, the story is over. It seems all but over, and yes, it, it, it's over. It's done. Until God shows up. And that's the key. God shows up. I ask you a question. How many times in your lives, how many times in your journey, how many times in your journey have you thought the story is all but over? The story is done. But God shows up. And when God shows up, marvelous things happen. When God shows up, Easter happens. When God shows up, resurrection happens. The scripture teaches us that the marvelous works of God are most often beyond our comprehension. So from the discovery of the empty tomb, they struggle throughout the entire week. From Easter last Sunday to today, they struggle. Struggle to understand what had happened to them. Struggle to understand this crucifixion and then this resurrection, or in the minds of some, this claimed resurrection. There was a whole week of appearances and testimonies about appearances. In the scripture you heard this morning, the apostle Thomas was told about this appearance. And Thomas says, I need some proof. Need some proof? For Thomas, it was not enough just to see Jesus. Thomas said, I will not believe that he's alive unless I see and can put my finger in the wounds in his hand. I will not believe unless I can thrust my hand into the wounds in his side. The scripture teaches us that Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, meets us where we are. And that's why in our journey we can face today and we can face tomorrow and we can face all the adversities in our lives because Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, meets us where we are. Amen. And so Jesus met Thomas where he was. Thomas, you're having trouble believing. Thomas, come here. You see my hand? Put your finger here. You see my side? Put your hand here. And to that Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, Thomas, you believe because you saw Blessed are they who believe, 
who have not seen, yet have not seen. They believe I am alive. They have not seen it, but they believe it anyway. They believe I'm alive for salvation, their salvation. They believe I'm alive for justice. They believe I'm alive for righteousness. They believe I'm alive for meekness and humility. They believe I'm alive so that they can have a profound relationship with God. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet they believe. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet they believe so foundly in my resurrection that they would found the church and call it resurrection. This church, founded by people who believe so profoundly in the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, that we are here as Resurrection Metropolitan Community Church. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. On this Sunday after Easter, this Sunday after resurrection, we are the believers who have not seen and yet we believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you for that. Thank you so much, Howard. Thank you for that. And Reverend Willie, thank you so much for your sermon. It was absolutely beautiful. I took away a really great nugget from that, and it's when God shows up, resurrection happens. We are resurrection. Are y'all ready to show up or what? because we got God on our side, and I am absolutely pumped to be here today. My name is Dominique Williams. Good morning, and I stand before you as your chair for Pride 2024. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. My co-chair, Justin Roberson, could not be here today. He is with me in spirit. I am so excited to announce our church's pride theme this year is Pride Meets Tribe. And our lineup of events that will make this year's Pride Month unforgettable. I've been planning this for weeks, and we're absolutely pumped to bring all of this to you. First up, we're kicking off with a burst of color at our Pride Kickoff Tie-Dye Social. Get ready to unleash your creativity and show off your true colors as we come together to tie-dye and celebrate diversity. Following that, we have a Rainbow Royalty Prom, a red carpet affair. It's your chance to dress to the nines and strut down the red carpet and dance the night away in a celebration of love and pride. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Pride Meets Tribe, a parking lot festival. It's a family-friendly event where we will transform our lovely parking lot into a vibrant festival with music, food, and community spirit. It's going to be a day to remember as we come together to honor our shared journey towards equality. And of course, we couldn't forget about the Houston Pride Celebration Parade. Join us as we march proudly through the streets, spreading love and joy to all who will witness this colorful procession. Are you guys pumped or what? I'm so excited, so excited. <laughs> so of course, none of this would be possible without the help of volunteers like yourselves. If you're passionate about making a difference and want to get involved, we need your energy and enthusiasm to make these events shine. You don't have to be a member to participate. I know there's a forum after church, but come and see me just briefly in the gathering place. There's a QR code with a link, and you can actually just download it quickly and get to the forum for volunteer signups, and that is how you learn how you can volunteer with us. And for our folks that are joining us online, Sandy Hardwick Pettis is standing by in the comments. She's going to drop my email in those comments for you, and you can email me any of your questions and request that link for volunteers as well. Together, let's make Pride Month a time of celebration, solidarity, and above all, love. Thank you, and let's make history together because we are Pride. Thank you so much. Hi, Resurrection. I'm Julia Tape, and I first walked through the doors of Resurrection in the summer of 2021. I found RMCC as I was looking for a church that loved all people, regardless of who they loved. A church that embodied God's radical love. And when I walked in, I saw you all. I was shocked to see so many seasoned LGBTQ plus folks sitting in the pews worshiping God. I was taught to respect those that have paved the way for the younger generation, and resurrection is full of people who have to pave the way for my generation. Although many people in, the, in my generation have turned away from the church because they do not feel welcomed, I know resurrection is a place that welcomes all people. Those of us who are part of the 18 through 40 age group are part of what is known as the next gen group here at resurrection. My generation has a lot of high ideas, and we are able to pursue those ideas because of the advocacy many of you all have done. Although our number is few, are few, it is my hope that the next generation group continues to grow. 
We don't just want a place to worship on Sundays. What we want is a place that recognizes diversity and allows for coexistence. This means having difference be the norm. I hope that others find RMCC like I did. I hope that those of you who are listening support the ministries through giving or through using your talents to ensure that the ministry continues for many generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Uh, my name is Kathleen Shielhopper. Good morning. As we prepare to give, please remember that you can give online by text or by placing your offering in the uh, offering plate. Remember the first believers who shared one heart and soul, held their possessions in common, and distributed them to all in need. In that same spirit, let us present our offerings at the feet of the risen Lord.
Let us pray. Amen. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for light and life and love, and above all, the presence of the living Lord among us. By your spirit who breathes within us, strengthen our faith, use our gifts, and work in our lives to bear witness to the resurrection of Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. amen. Aren't you glad Jesus showed up? Aren't you glad that God continues to show up in our lives? No matter what's going on, we can always count on God to show up. And we are so, so grateful for that. So, so grateful for that. Jesus showed up for his, his friends and his followers time and time again. And it's that time uh, when Jesus showed up uh, on the night that he was to be turn his ministry over to us. And he taught them something. He taught his disciples a way that they could remember him and a way that they could be reminded that even though they may not, he may not be with them always, that he would always show up in their lives. And that's what we do when we celebrate communion. That's what we do when we come to this table and we recognize that God is present in our lives. When Jesus met with his disciples, he took the bread. He lifted it up. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And then he broke it. And he said, take and eat of this bread. For this bread is my body that's been open for you. And likewise, Jesus lifted up the cup and he blessed it and gave thanks for it and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. For as often as you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, remember me Remember my life. Remember all that I taught you. And remember, most importantly, that I will always show up. God, in these moments, as we prepare to receive, we thank you for the way you are present in our lives. God, we need you each and every day. And we just want to know that we are loved and that we're cared about. And may these elements remind us of your love today. Amen. At Resurrection MCC, as in all MCCs around the world, we celebrate an open communion. And that simply means that you don't have to be a member of this church or any church to receive these blessings, to be welcomed to this open table. You have a place here today. As our ushers come forward, they're going to offer you, our communion service will offer you a brief blessing. And then for those of you who may need an extended prayer, we have our prayer partners standing alongside the prayer wall who are there to support you with your prayer needs. And also for those of you who are online or even sitting here in the pews who may want to send us your prayer requests, we have a way to receive those through our text system. If you will text RMCC Pray to 97000, our prayer ministers are available to receive those prayers. Together, we receive God's love. Together, we receive our blessings. Together, Christ meets us right where we are. Let us take together. Amen.
God, we thank you so much for being with us, for helping us to come together as one community to share in this meal so that we are reminded of your love. God, we ask you to bless us, to bless our people, and to bless the meeting that we will have immediately after service. God, we love you, and we thank you for loving us. Amen. I remind again that <clears throat> we will have a congregational meeting immediately after the service, and also uh, brunch buddies will be at the Flying Fish uh, after the congregational meeting. I was about to give you the address, but I guess you saw it. Will you stand for the benediction, please? Go forth from this place, knowing that you are the people of God and you serve a resurrected Savior. Go in peace in the name of the resurrected one. Amen.